Hey all here OS Reviews, today we have a bit of a treat in that we're taking a closer look at Gateway's new 14-inch ultra-slim notebooks. You may recall that Gateway was a very popular and pretty well-reputable manufacturer of PCs in the 90s. For many, it's their first memories of owning a computer in their homes. However, they were acquired by Acer in the late 2000s, and after being relatively quiet for a bit of time, the brand is now back, this time as an exclusive on Walmart, and they're releasing a lineup of various products, including laptops that ranges from 11 inches all the way up to full-sized 15.6 inches, starting at around $179 and up. And we'll find out whether this is going to be a worthwhile a product to consider here in 2020. So here's a quick look at the website in terms of their launch, and one of the selling points, I guess, is it comes in a variety of different colors, so it's rather playful and they're definitely going after a more affordable segment now. The 14 inch is the most popular since it has the most variants that you can pick that have different internals. So it ranges from $199 for the base model and goes all the way up to $479 for a top of the line model that has a Intel i5 chipset. But personally, I would say that the middle of the road options might be the most competitive and interesting for average consumers that want to buy something affordable, but also good enough to get you by for most of your needs. In particular, there is one here around 350 that is using a Ryzen 3 processor from AMD. Of course, AMD's current generation of processors have just gotten better and better to the point where they're now very close in many respects to Intel's and have offered very good value. That's a pattern that we've started to see in a few laptops now here in 2020. The other model here at 369 is the one that comes with a Intel Core i3 instead of the AMD Ryzen 3. Out of the two, the version that we're taking a look at is the Core i3 model, but all of the 14 inch ultra slim laptops share a very similar design. We have a, again, 14 inch full HD 1080p display, and we have a few colors to pick from, including there's a green version, a blue, there's a purple and a traditional black edition. They tout a collaboration with THX for tuning the display as well as the audio through the speakers, and it comes with a fingerprint scanner built into the trackpad that you can use to unlock the computer using Windows Hello, which is neat. Now the Core i3 that they're using is the latest generation or the 10th gen chip. The weight at 3.5 pounds is average, I'd say, for a 14-inch laptop. It has Bluetooth 5.1 built on in, which is great to see. There is a Type-C port that you can use for data transfer. However, it doesn't work for charging. You still have to use a separate little charging port for doing that, which is a bit of a design con. Battery life is rated to last up to 8.5 hours in the light usage mode. 128 gig built-in SSD, which offers pretty fast read and write speeds. It can be further expanded via a M2 SATA slot that is removable on the back of the laptop. There's four gigs of DDR4 RAM built on in, which out of the entire spec list is the part that I'd say is the most uh, limiting, but it is what it is. It can be upgraded, and one thing I will say is if you want to pay for $100 more for the um, i5 edition of the laptop, it does come with 16 gigs of RAM, so you're getting three times the RAM compared to all the other models. So anyways, we have a few certificates inside of the packaging along with some user manual quick start guide. And we also have the AC charging adapter, which is pretty modern in terms of its design. Very compact, and you can flick out this prong when you are taking it with you on the road. Here we have the laptop itself, which has a very clean appearance, just the gateway logo on the very top. There is a slightly tapered design on the edges, and what I appreciate is there's still plenty of I.O., including a Kingsington lock, a charging adapter, USB 3.0, full-sized HDMI, and that Type-C port for data. And on the other side, we have access to a micro SD card slot that you can use to expand on the memory, read back files, standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and a second USB 3.0 port. The laptop is constructed out of a polycarbonate plastic, but does feel pretty sturdy, nothing wrong with this. Plenty of laptops, like ThinkPads even, still use plastic on the rear and feels sturdy enough. I will mention though that if you upgrade to their top of the line 14 inch model, which again looks exactly the same, that model does have a aluminum metal shell instead of plastic. So that's the model that has the i5 chip inside, but all the other additions do use a plastic build. Now on the rear here we do have rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around. There's ventilation grills for the fan, since this is a kind of full i3 chip, it will kick in in terms of preventing it from overheating when you are gaming or doing some more graphically intensive tasks. It's not a silent fanless machine, unlike a Core M3, for instance. 
And then on the side here, we do have that door for accessing the SATA slot. The overall form factor here is pretty conventional for a 14 inch laptop. I wouldn't say it's anything out of the ordinary. So as an example, we also have a 14 inch ThinkPad. It is a tad smaller overall, so smaller bezels, and it's also a bit thinner as well if we look at it from the edges. 12 or 11 inch screens like most Chromebooks. So if we put that on the side here by contrast, this one here has a 12 inch display. You can see that it will also be a little bit larger than that. Personally, I think this is a comfortable size because the screen is still large enough that you can get work done, but at the same time still being small enough to easily put into a backpack. Opening up the laptop, we can see it has a pretty comfortable size trackpad. Also has the aforementioned Windows Hello fingerprint scanner, which is very convenient and usually found in more expensive laptops. And then the keyboard itself takes full advantage of the width of the laptop, which I am glad to see. So it's extremely spacious. Plastic here is pretty rigid, even as you're pressing down. Feels actually very sturdy. And the boot up times are also incredibly quick. It can turn on from a cold boot in less than 10 seconds, so pretty snappy there. Otherwise, the keyboard is not backlit on this particular model, which would have been nice to see, but overall, considering they're going for a slightly more affordable trade-off, I'd say it's acceptable. The depth of travel on this keyboard feels just right, and anywhere that you click on, the entire key kind of presses down, so the stabilization of the keycaps is also pretty decent. If anything, it is missing a dedicated numpad just to make room for wider keys. The speaker bar is on the top next to the hinge. As you can see there, it is a stereo speaker, and the placement, I think, is better than some laptops, which have a tendency to put them onto the base that gets muffled up, especially on Chromebooks. So this one here will be harder to cover when you have it on your lap. One very interesting decision that you can see here is that Gateway have decided to use a flat display here that's actually covered using a sheet of a durable plastic. So it almost reminds you of a touchscreen. In fact, if they added a digitizer, it would really act as one. So at first, maybe you're kind of curious to tap on the screen, even though this one here does not have a, again, touchscreen built on in. This, of course, comes with pros and cons. In terms of pros, it definitely looks more expensive because the screen is completely flush, just like the MacBook. It's also easier to clean and wipe down. And because it has a glossier nature, it looks better in terms of contrast when you're watching videos. The downside is the glossy nature does reflect more light and also attracts a bit more fingerprints. So pretty good visibility. One thing I will say is that the brightness controls doesn't have the most variance in between the uh, selection here. So at the dimmest, I do wish it could get a little bit even dimmer, although it's okay if you're using it at night or at bed or in a cabin somewhere. Um, if you are cranking up at the highest, it still remains pretty visible even if there's some light around you, despite not being the brightest display in the world. So if you are outdoor in direct sunlight, the visibility might still be a little bit tough. Now on the very top, we do have a very basic webcam along with some noise cancellation microphones for video conferencing. Decent construction, I'd say. Everything does feel pretty good, not creaking or cringing, and the kind of hinge does feel quite sturdy because it's a one piece that stretches all the way in the middle, a la a MacBook style. The fingerprint scanner is very fast using Windows Hello. We can just rest it on top of it and it unlocks in a split second. Accuracy is pretty good. The trackpad, by the way, is using precision drivers. So it does feel pretty good in terms of the navigation, the fluidity and the responsiveness. Not too many issues there in terms of just swiping along and doing regular tasks. And it does have a pretty satisfying click when you're pressing down on the left and right sides. Afterwards, we're greeted to the Windows 10 home screen and we do have a custom cow wallpaper uh, as expected expected from Gateway, but of course you can easily change that. I will point out that by default it's in Windows 10 S mode, it should stand for safe, and it's technically a more protected version of Windows that's more designed for kids, for schools, and for businesses. But if you're a typical user and you want to install kind of regular EXE files for standard Windows, you can just exit out of S mode by clicking on this button, change it into Windows 10 Home Edition standard. Overall, the bezel size might not be the smallest in the world but it's comfortable I'd say and more than anything the colors do have a pretty natural look to them. So what you'll see is what looks like a included versions or trial versions of games, but in fact, these are just bookmark to the web browser, essentially. If I tap on this Forge of Empires, for instance, web-based game, and it will just take you into the Edge browser and then allow you to play this game, which is an exclusive, apparently, with Gateway. But uh, of course, if you don't want it, you can easily remove it from your desktop. Again, it's not installed on the system itself, so it doesn't take up any resources. The same thing goes with a few of the shortcuts 
down below here. They're all just bookmarks to the browser and easily get rid of these if you don't want to use it. Out of the SSD, we have about 95 gigs remaining after the operating system has been installed, which is an okay amount, I'd say, for basic usage like Word documents, some multimedia, and installing programs. It should be fine because you can always supplement it by using a micro SD card or inserting another SSD. It's indeed running on the Intel Core i3 and the base clock speed is 1.2 gigahertz in terms of being energy efficient. If you're in the power saving mode, the fan doesn't kick in and it's completely silent, but as you push it into the turbo speed, it can go as fast as 3.4 gigahertz. Now, if we jump into a quick look at the performance, the average pass mark score is around 5,253. In terms of where it sits, we can see that actually it's not too far off from earlier generations of, say, Core i5s or Core i7s. It's actually a pretty solid score, and for regular navigation, things like opening up files and browsing the web, all of these tasks are very quick and responsive. With the AMD Ryzen 3 3200U, which is the model that's found on the 350 configuration edition, you can see that the pass mark score is about 4,090. However, the difference is definitely getting more and more narrow. Compared to the $200 configuration model that uses an Intel Celeron N3350, this one here is definitely a huge leap ahead. And you can see here how the Celeron is a fairly entry-level chip that usually gets around 1,100 points in terms of the pass mark performance. And so with both of the AMD Ryzen as well as with the i3 editions here, we're talking about performance that is almost four or five times higher. So it definitely will be worthwhile if you're trying to get a laptop for daily usage and you plan on doing slightly heavier tasks, you want to use it regularly for the next couple of years, I would definitely suggest going for one of the middle tier categories. Now we are looking at these stats using the Edge browser, and that is the default browser, of course, that's built on in. You can obviously install Chrome, Firefox, or any standard application you would want. That is definitely one of the advantages of having a full Windows machine versus Chrome OS, for instance, is the versatility of having much more legacy programs be supported. Now, in terms of battery life and endurance, I would say that the rated, uh, again, eight hours is a little bit optimistic at times. It will get you by if you are using it in the best battery battery mode, kind of power saving, in addition with moderate lighting, it will get you that um, estimated time for a full kind of workday. If you are using it in kind of one of the normal modes or crank up the performance for the fastest processing speed, that's also going to drain the power a bit more. And typically I find myself getting around five hours in typical real world usage. For folks that don't know, the new Microsoft Edge, which has an icon that looks like this now, basically is built on the same technology. It's built on Chromium as the Chrome browser is. They're both using the same source code. And as a result, the new Edge browser's performance is now extremely close to using Chrome. In fact, there's not really a huge difference anymore compared to earlier days, especially with Internet Explorer, which used to be just night and day and just nowhere near as good as Chrome in terms of the smoothness and the speed. But now since they're all built on the same technology, you can just also use the built-in browser and there's not that big of a difference anymore. Now, this does have dual band Wi-Fi, including 2.4G and 5G AC, so it is going to be pretty fast. Um, as you can see here, in terms of opening up a page, you will hardly have to wait. So reception quality for the Wi-Fi is typically very strong in my testing, probably helped by the fact that it has a plastic shell, so the antennas do have more space to kind of pass through, and combined with, again, the i3 chip, Overall, the experience is very snappy and fluid, even on complex sites. If anything, it's just the four gigabytes of RAM. What that means is it's able to keep less programs active in its memory. So if you are someone that likes to keep, say, 20 tabs open in the browser at once, you'll find that when you switch back and forth between those tabs, it may have to refresh itself. However, if you keep just a handful, say just under five tabs or so, you can still go back and forth and the experience is still pretty fast. Uh, it really just limits things like multitasking. If you're doing things like, say, video editing plus web browsing at the same time, the RAM will be a little bit on the low side. But if you are more used to doing one or two things, um, it's not going to be really a problem, and the processor itself is fast enough to Thermos on this computer are pretty good. I never got uncomfortable in terms of using it even as I was putting onto my lap, so it doesn't really overheat, I'd say. It has plenty of room and ventilation for the air to pass through. With that being said, under a kind of more heavier task, it definitely will kick in in terms of the fan, and at the most aggressive mode, it definitely becomes a bit of a white noise in the background.
The sound quality here is average, I'd say. It's by no means the best sounding speaker I've ever tried, even for a laptop. So the THX branding there is really just for getting the speakers that they've chosen to perform maybe a little bit better and sound a bit more dynamic, but the actual quality of the parts are still not really determined or created by THX. However, it does have pretty decent separation. It fills up the left and right channels well, and so if you're watching a video clip and objects are moving across the screen, having this uh, separated distance here between the two sides on a 14-inch machine does work pretty well. And it's definitely pretty enjoyable for watching videos with sufficient sharpness and detail to make it a great Netflix machine, a great YouTube machine for those tasks. Again, the parts in here are fast enough for streaming back video even if you're scrubbing between different parts of the video. We can go back and forth and you can see how it's still going to play back pretty quickly if not instantly. And playing back you know, video up to full HD 1080p resolution doesn't pose an issue. Here's a quick demo of how it works for productivity, things like Microsoft Word. It, you can see how documents load up very quickly, even longer ones. It's fast and snappy enough that you can make edits and use it for practicing presentations. It feels very comfortable, doesn't really slow down or boggle down, even as you're changing between different views. Same goes when it comes to editing code and doing some uh, kind of coding work on here, whether it's Python, Jupyter Notebook, it can still run really without any issues. In my testing, exploring a 10 minute long full HD video that was edited on this machine took me around eight to 10 minutes. So it's again, not going to be lightning fast, but definitely good enough that it's not going to be impractical. It's significantly better compared to something like an Intel Celeron or Intel Atom back in the day. Final comment when it comes to gaming, things like Minecraft will definitely work on this machine, no problems at all. Again, I've seen it run on devices which have much lower end hardware than this, including mobile titles and selections that you can find from the Microsoft Store. In terms of even lighter games, things like Solitaire, which are built on in by default, of course it runs pretty flawlessly and opens almost instantly. One of the benefits of having an SSD is the much faster read and write speeds compared to laptops. In the past, uh, in this price range, commonly used the hard drives, spinning hard drives, which had much lower speeds. Although this is not a gaming laptop or gaming machine by any stretch of the imagination, it's perfectly good enough to get by with the light gaming needs. So again, for the casual user, the average consumer that may want to do a little bit of everything, a bit of gaming, a bit of work and productivity, a bit of entertainment, this is going to be a super consistent machine that can handle, again, most things that you throw at it. So ultimately, at the end of the day, I would say that the Gateway 14-inch Ultra Slim Notebook is not going to break any grounds in terms of revolutionizing things that we haven't seen before, but it offers a great value uh, proposition through this exclusive deal with Walmart and comes in various configurations. All of them offer pretty competitive prices uh, versus other brand laptops that you'll find for the same money. But, uh, you know, in its current range, maybe the mid range that has the i3 or the AMD Ryzen are the two that kind of juts out the most. This is going to be a great kind of casual everyday laptop uh, to consider if you need something just to take with you, get most of your work done and still look and feel pretty stylish while doing it. Of course, it's not perfect. I do wish, again, that it came with maybe 6 gigs of RAM, and if the USB Type-C can also support power delivery, that would be even better. But as it is, it proves that you don't have to really spend an arm or a leg to get a pretty solid performing laptop, especially here in 2020. So you can learn more details if you're interested in the links down below for all of their collection. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a closer look at Gateway's 14-inch Ultra Slim Notebook series. 